It's been another month, so here's an update on what's been going on with the LEGO Races project. The majority of dev time gets pumped into modelling, shading and piecing together the maps. And I've currently completed the first two circuits, but I've grossly underestimated how long this process was going to take me. I definitely would have explored other methods if I were to undertake a project like this in the future. But the results are definitely worth it when you compare the tracks without scenery to the tracks with scenery. But with that being said, what else have I been working on? Well, after posting the project for download, one of the more common bits of feedback I received was in regards to the AI races, and I use the term AI loosely. The bots are programmed to follow a path that I had created around the tracks. It works up until the bots crash into each other, which happens often as they all follow the same paths. So I was curious. How did the old LEGO Races dev team accomplish this? Well, while I was viewing one of the maps in the Map Editor program, I noticed that there was an AI Paths tab. And so when I clicked it and I loaded in a file, remarkably it showed me the exact path route that the AI Races take. But when I tried to read these files in a text editor, it was just garbled nonsense. I couldn't make out anything useful or even readable from it. I tried to open the files in the LEGO Races 1 binary editor and I was finally able to read some values. The only problem being is that I have no idea what these values represent, let alone how to translate these into a usable format for my Unity project. So I took to Google to see if anyone on the Rock Raiders United forums had any idea on how these files are structured. Incredibly, in 2013, Rob Explorian had posted a complete teardown on these files, why they were named how they are, and the, what the values represent, and a good explanation as to why there were so many routes for a single map. It appears that each AI racer has around three routes that the game will randomly select to follow when a map is loaded, and that explains why in a tracks folder there appears to be around 15 routes, three for each of the five AI racers, and some tracks had an additional few routes, which is used by the demo. This also explains why when playing LEGO Racers, you never see the AI ramming into each other. It's because they all have separate paths to avoid this problem. For a deeper explanation on how these files work, I suggest reading Rob's explanation, as his post has an incredible amount of detail that I'm going to skip over for now. But the basics are this. We get a start position as a vector 3 with an x, y and z coordinate, and the subsequent positions that come after this will have to be calculated by subtracting values from the initial start position. Now I'm not about to go through all 800 lines to calculate each position, and I shouldn't have to either. The track editor can already do this, so why can I not simply pull these position data from the track editor? Well, that's what I did. I decompiled the track editor and added some additional functionality to help speed up my dev time. On loading a map, some data gets saved to my clipboard, and this data will be the colour and position of all of the power-up bricks in the track. This was a necessary addition, as for some reason, despite all of the data being listed right in front of my very eyes, I'm not able to copy and paste from the program. And this removes the need to type out each of the power-up bricks coordinates by hand. On loading an AI file, the calculated position data for each point in the file gets saved to my clipboard, and by saving this data into my Unity project, I can then read and instantiate a pathway around the tracks with the exact paths that the AI would have taken in the original LEGO races. This is a huge time save, and as you can see the text document ends up being 800 lines of data long. By automatically saving this data to my clipboard, it allows me to rip all AI data for a map and import it into my Unity project in seconds. So after I save this data to my Unity project, I write a quick script to instantiate the objects along with the line renderer that displays the path. And so after a bit of scaling, rotating and positioning, I'm pretty pleased with the results. As always, thanks for watching, commenting and supporting my channel. And if you're interested in recreating LEGO races yourself, all of the tools and form posts mentioned in this video will be in the description below.